Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Today we're going to be talking about an automotive invention that really changed the way that we tune and deal with our cars and it came to be in the mainstream in the 1980s and I'm talking about this guy right here, the oxygen sensor. So if you want to learn how this thing works and more importantly, a couple of things you need to check on yours to make sure it's working properly, then stay tuned, we'll jump in and get started. Hey, so the oxygen sensor was actually first created in the late 1960s by Bosch. And it was first used in an automotive role by Volvo in the mid 1970s. But as the 70s turned into the 1980s uh, and emission standards started to increase, the American automotive manufacturers needed a way to uh, have a computer detect what the exhaust was doing and then adjust the fuel air mixture for better tailpipe emissions. So they started to utilize the oxygen sensor in conjunction with the engine computer and an electronic carburetor, later fuel injection, to do that. So how does the oxygen sensor actually sense oxygen in your exhaust? Well, to tell you the truth, it doesn't. What it does is it detects the amount of oxygen in outside air and your exhaust and then reads the difference between those two on a millivolt scale. You see the oxygen sensor is actually like a little tiny battery. Now the most important part is here in the tip which is sometimes called the thimble by the manufacturers and that contains a couple of ceramic plates coated in what's called zirconia. Uh, in between those plates are platinum. Exhaust gases are drawn over one side. Fresh air from the uh, part of the sensor that doesn't go into the tailpipe or the, the manifold or whatever you want to call it is drawn in from the other. And the difference in oxygen between those two sides actually creates a small electrical charge within the sensor, which is then fed to your engine computer. Now this, this charge is measured in millivolts. Usually it can range from anywhere between zero and about over 600 millivolts. The higher the reading, the more of a difference, the less oxygen in your exhaust gas, therefore the richer your mixture is going into the engine. Now let's talk a little bit about the readings that the actual sensor sends the engine. Now we said it's done in millivolts, it's a very low voltage. It usually can range anywhere from about 400 to 600 some millivolts or what we call the usable scale. And I say usable because for a while your engine will actually disregard the readings from your oxygen sensor, especially if you have an OBD1 system. That's because in order to detect and create this reading successfully, the sensor itself has to be about 600 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. So the engine is actually going to disregard the reading from the sensor when it's too cold, usually right after startup, but also on some cars when the cars stopped and been idling for a while. The sensor will actually cool down and you have to do some driving before the car goes back into closed loop mode. Now when the engine is getting a usable reading from a hot oxygen sensor, the voltage will fluctuate rapidly. Every quarter second or so, it'll jump from either a really rich signal to a really lean signal and so forth. About 450 millivolts is the over under. Anything under 450 millivolts is detected as lean. Anything over is detected as a rich condition. So what the engine computer will do will actually take a set time period and draw an average. Is it on average getting over or under 450 millivolts to determine whether the engine or fuel mixture, fuel air mixture is running too rich or too lean and make the adjustment accordingly. That's why you really can't test one of these with a voltage tester and just probe this, this wire because your readings are going to jump all over the place and unless you can quickly memorize them and compute the average, 
you're not going to be able to do it. And I'll tell you what, it's going to jump so fast, it's impossible. That's why you need a scan tool so you can look at what the engine computer sees and it'll actually have a readout called the rich lean flag and you'll see that change every three or four seconds and what that is is the average of uh, the voltage that the oxygen sensor is putting out so the engine can can know whether it's running too rich or too lean and adjust accordingly the way these obd1 systems work is it's either one or the other it's either going to lean out the mixture or richen up the mixture if it detects it's running too lean it's going to continually richen it till it detects it's running rich and then bounce it back to the lean side again and it'll just go back and forth back and forth all over again these systems work on averages and that's exactly what it's going to do now let's talk about replacing yours now when should you replace yours well there's a couple reasons why and a couple of times when. Number one, if you've just bought the car and have no idea the history of the oxygen sensor, I strongly recommend replacing it. Number two, every 50,000 miles or so, I strongly recommend you replace it. In 1981, I believe General Motors put in their service guides that they should be replaced every 15,000 miles. From 82 onward, they called them lifetime sensors. <laughs> if you worked on an older car, you know that nothing, especially at this age, is guaranteed for life. So I strongly recommend you replace it about every 50,000 miles or so. Another time you should replace it is if it's been contaminated. If you've had a car that's been running extremely rich for a long time or has been burning oil the tip of the sensor may be coated you may not be getting an accurate reading so once you clear up those issues you might want to think about replacing yours at that time as well All right so if you're in the market for a new sensor just remember there are several types there are one two and three wire uh, iterations of these one wire is grounded to the actual manifold and this is the lone wire that provides the voltage reading the computer two wire system just has this voltage wire and a ground wire to ground the sensor and a three volt uh, three wire system actually has a ground a voltage and another uh, wire to provide current to an actual heating element that's inside the sensor which will keep it hot uh, longer like when the car idles or, or shortly after initial startup so it provides the computer with a more accurate reading earlier um, if you're looking for one just make sure you buy the correct one for your engine some engines as things evolved even though you might have a 350 or 305 or 307 whatever the case is as the years went by GM uh, kind of evolved the sensor design and may have added a two or three wire sensor so just double check and check your connector and make sure you purchase the right one now just a couple of quick tips for when you do replace yours number one if you're having a hard time getting it out of there uh, there are a couple of things you can do they do make uh, specific oxygen sensor sockets that you can put on the end of a ratchet that may help also you may want to let the car idle for a few minutes and heat that joint up a little bit if you're having a hard time getting yours out i'd recommend trying that as well before you start to do anything more extreme than that about 80 90 percent of the time just letting the car idle for about five minutes will help loosen up that that connection and you'll be able to break it loose but if you do that just be careful because your manifold is going to be hot Another thing, when you do replace it with a new one, they do come with some anti-seize compound on the threads. I'd recommend giving it a nice good coating. Normally the factory doesn't use enough or a lot. Um, and if you wanna get it out again, I'd strongly recommend giving it a good coating. Just be sure you keep it off the thimble or the tip so you don't contaminate your sensor all right so there you go guys all you ever needed to know about your oxygen sensor 
I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. There's plenty more where that came from. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.